Hello, this is Hedy Aborzu from SirianToots.com. In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to put a 3D model in a real environment with a moving camera. This tutorial includes two parts. In part one, we are going to work with a software called PF Track to take the actions of the moving camera. And in part two, we are going to import everything to After Effects and composite our 3D model with our uh, real environment. So let's get started. Create a new project here and call it whatever you want and confirm it. But I took this footage with a 25 frame rate per second. So I should set this one to 25 and then confirm it. Import your video. My video is actually uh, here and I have to drag it here. So I took this video with camera 5D Mark III. So set the preset to custom and set the film back to 36. And it is actually the camera's uh, sensor width. And if you set this one, the, side, uh, the sensor's height will be set automatically. So uh, hit C here to catch your video and then everything is going to be a start. I'm not going to waste your time by filling this. Uh, I'm going to pause this video and come back a few seconds. So the process of catching has been finished. As you see, there is a greenish color here. The next step is create a new node called uh, image manipulation here. And uh, check this filter here and sharpen your video and even uh, remove your noise and uh, check this color box here uh, decrease your gamma increase your contrast not so much we are going to be able to recognize the points later on uh, I think this is good and that's it. The next step is create another node, uh, user track. And now we have to find uh, some points manually. We have to maintain the parallax. Then we have to find some points in foreground, some in middle ground, and some in background. To do that, uh, after you choose your user track node, create this button, create. And create a point here. And I'm going to uh, select this point, but check everything from this monitor. And we have to set something, set the deformation to rotate, scale in a skew, set the polish range to 15 and check the illumination and blur. And then set everything as default, set default. And uh, now we have to track forward and backward in time. So first of all, track backward in time to let it go here and check everything from this monitor. Make sure this point sticks to the first point that you put it. So it has been finished and let it go forward in time. And this video has been stopped because uh, this is a blurry image and we already checked the blurriness and even illumination. And we have to do uh, it frame by frame like this. And now the video is okay and we, have, we can track forward automatically, not frame by frame, but make sure to check everything from this monitor and the video has been stopped because the failure threshold is 70 and uh, i can decrease this number to let it not to stop but i'm going to set it to 70 and then let it go forward so this video is going to be finished here uh, i have uh, 
track this tr uh, point now I have to do something there is a brownish color here I have to get rid of that to do that I have to hit H plus to get rid of the brownish color forward and if I wanted to get rid of it backward I have to hit uh, H minus so hit H plus twice in PF track everything works twice you have to hit any button twice to work so uh, I have to find another point uh, in the middle ground like this point so let it track forward hit this icon here to track forward and check everything with this monitor and as you see it is going it is tracking fast and here the footage is so blurry that's why the speed uh, comes down so check everything from this monitor and make sure uh, the point is a sticks uh, to the floor to where it was before and that's it and it's going to be finished soon now I have to find another point uh, in the background for example I think this point is good I'm going to scale it down and uh, track backward in time this video has been stopped because of the blurriness of my footage. I, ha I have to do it frame by frame and put it here and again frame by frame and let it go track backward frame by frame and then track backward frame by frame and then track backward oh as you see the footage uh, has been missed actually the point has been missed so here I have to do something first of all remove these points remove them backwards so remove them and then track them one by one my point was here I have to put it here and then track track and then again put it here and then track track and then let it go frame by frame do it and if it goes away put it exactly on the frame where it was before and then do everything manually and that's it I'm not gonna waste your time by finding so many user tracks you have to find at least 18 to 20 user tracks so I'm going to import my user track that I did uh, previously so these are my user tracks but I'm going to check the first three one this is the first one and check everything from this monitor make sure the uh, this point this tracking point uh, is a sticks so and make sure to maintain the parallax and spread your tracking point all over the place not only in foreground or even in background spread them the next step is uh, creating another node called uh, auto track uh, candidate number I'm going to set this one to 150 from 150 candidate number I'm going to uh, have 100 target uh, number uh, of uh, auto track uh, set the blur image and even uh, check the blur image and even Im illumination uh, set this one consistency to free camera and deformation to rotate scale in a skew and search mode set this one to better accuracy it is more accurate than the other two than the better speed and optical flow but the speed is down but uh, spent uh, a few minutes on it and then that's it
hits auto track. Uh, it is going to track forward and even backward, and you have to fit, uh, you have to wait five to ten minutes. I'm not gonna waste your time. I'm going to pause this video and come back after it gets finished. Now the process of user tracking has been finished, and we have so many uh, tracking points. So we have to go to the other step, which is creating the camera solver here. Uh, we have to set some setting. I took this footage with a focal length of 32. So set the focal length to known as 32, 32. I've got a little bit of shaky footage. So set the translation to high smooth and even set the rotation to high smooth and solve all. Now we have a 3D environment which was exactly the movement of my camera so i have to set something go to errors tab here and hit trim and put it on number two or one or between them one and a half and hit refine all and this is my camera these are my tracking points and the other step is creating another node called uh, orient scene here and we have to rotate it here uh, hold down middle mouse click uh, to zoom in and zoom out rotate it harden rotate it make sure the x-axis is this way left right uh, z-axis is toward backwards and y-axis is toward upwards so uh, put it exactly on the floor and check everything from this monitor make sure the floor is exactly uh, under uh, these points so he translate here edit mode set it to translate and bring it up and bring it a little bit upper so shrink it down here and now we have to set some points some greenish point actually and set them as origin so set the edit mode to none and select this green point here this one this one this one this one this one and hit this button to darken uh, your monitor your view actually and after you select all these points set this one to set origin now we have to check everything we have to check whether the floor sticks or it is a sliding and it sticks let me see yes now we have to put a 3d model here so create another node called uh, test object where is it it is here test object uh, create a mushroom here and add to scene scale it up here and uh, set this one to place at selected feature and put it here duplicate it and put it on this point duplicate it and again put it on this point duplicate it and put it here and let me check everything yes they sticks to the floor they are not sliding and the next step is uh, exporting so create another node this one export and a format i'm going to import them later on in after effects so set this one to adobe after effects.ma and set the scale to 1000 because later on you won't have uh you will not face so many big squares i'm going to scale the squares of the uh of this project down later on 
and I'm going to save it and call it whatever I want for example 08 09 this project already exists 09 and export it and as you see export has been succeeded that's it now I have a moving camera as you see here and I took the exact action of this moving camera in the next tutorial I'm going to import all these points plus this camera and its movement to After Effects and put a 3D model in my real scene that's it thank you so much for watching this video